Yeah. Hi, Tom. Thank you so much for joining us for this Color Vision interview. How are you doing? Thank you. I'm really well. Thank you very much. Um, I'm coping well with the situation. That's great. And so, to begin this interview, what color could define your mood in this moment? Actually, I, funnily enough, it's two colors that come to my mind <laughs> because there is an ambiguity. You know, I have a very strong, um, uh, strong, first, I would say it's yellow. Um, but I also have a purple um, inside. So it is, uh, you know, I think we're all split now in an ambiguity between insecurity and of course hope. So, but I would go, to go, I would go for yellow. <clears throat> we'll go for yellow. Okay, we're gonna, we're gonna sell it for yellow so we can <laughs> interview with a, with a yellow. And tell me, what, what yeah. memory does this color trigger for you? Um, it's, my well, the first memory is it's 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 for me it's the yellow is the sun the yellow is the um, the energy is nature, um, and it is also linked with joy and um, and um, and very strongly also with you know humanity because you know we uh, we uh, um, so yellow is um, is a very positive color for me extremely right. positive. Absolutely, I, I, I get that, I get that. And regarding you more personally, what, what is your passion in life? Well, my passion is, I would say first it's people, um, and secondly, it's nature. Um, I, you know, especially, um, especially in the current context, um, we, I think this is um, family, people, the connections, what really makes, the difference in our lives is the happiness and the love Absolutely. that we feel. And regarding what you do in life, what is your field of expertise and what do you do? <clears throat> well, I'm, my, um, my whole life I've been working in, um, in branding um, okay. and I've now, I'm now a brand consultant. Um, it's all about the art of selling dreams and selling, you know, selling stories um, rather than selling products. It is really, um, the art of, you know, creating a community which is united by the values um, the brand represents. So it's, um, that's what I do professionally. And of course, I'm also um, extremely, as I told you, I have a passion for people. So I'm very, very actively connecting people and trying to help people um, to scale up their business uh, by connecting them with the right people. Okay, that's, uh, that's awesome. That's awesome. And regarding the, the, the weird situation we're in right now, the, the current pandemic, how are you personally <clears throat> navigating this? Oh, and now it is much more actually projecting ourselves into this new reality because the world has changed post um, COVID-19. And um, so it is, um, I feel it, it, it was, you know, there was a lot of emotion in those, in those, in those months because of course a lot of, um, a lot of doubt and insecurity about um, the lack of transparency, and of course we have been hit hard um, and some populations really have suffered um, incredible losses so um, it's the first time in my life that I experienced something you know, something similar to a war uh, situation and in some in some way we are at war with the virus and you talked actually about uh, the after COVID-19 what do you see mm -hmm. for the aftermath of the pandemic what do you think the world needs after this well first of all I think there is a split between the APAC region Asian markets and us um, the Western markets I think we are much more traumatized by this pandemic than the Asian markets for a very simple reason because the Asians have been much more hit 20 years ago with SARS and 9-11. Um, when, when SARS hit Asia in 2001, this really is what, where everything it triggered um, um, e-commerce, online shopping, cashless payment, and in a way, the Asian business and economy is 10 years probably ahead of us when it comes to technology um, and also the consumer. So they're back to normal now. They have managed to cope with this pandemic in a much different way than we are. We are right now realizing 
that our business model is not prepared to, you know, I mean, the e-commerce is even, you know, some big businesses who don't even have an e-commerce um, and just relate on brick and mortar. So I, I do think it will be a game changer now for, um, for the Western economy. Yes, because um, we're doing things. Um, I mean, we were always smiling at those Asians when they were traveling to, our, to, to Europe and wearing masks. Um, but, you know, they have lived with it for the last 10 or 20 years. So they are very much aware of uh, what hygienic and a hygienic exercise is um, important it has uh, for the society. So um, I think we'll see a lot, of, uh, a lot of things changing now. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. Because as you said, like, we had some delay on that matter and maybe it, it will accelerate yeah. the process for us on, on our side. Do you think this could maybe also create new values for our society and maybe change the oh, way we yes. interact? Mm -hmm. uh, yes, I hope so. I mean, we still have some countries that are struggling because they have um, leaders who are, I would say, lacking um, coherence and, and leadership skills like Trump in the US and Johnson here in, in, in the UK. I mean, um, I do think that there's a strong sense for solidarity and empathy um, so, and, um, and we, I think the great learning from it is, is that you can only um, surmount a crisis and a war by um, an alliance and solidarity and collaboration. Now, <clears throat> the Americans and the Brits still think they can solve it on their own. Um, and, um, and they will, you know, I think they will have to pay the bill for that and, and find out themselves. So I think it's going to be maybe a bit more painful in those countries. But um, overall, I, I'm very positive because I think it will um, force people to collaborate and also to, to help each other. Um, and, uh, and as we can see, you know, it's been really a country by country approach. Um, but getting out of this crisis, we see that some countries will struggle much more than others. Yeah, I absolutely know. And I, and I agree on, 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 on the collaboration that, that you talked about. Mm -hmm. And I, I wanted to talk also a bit about the business. Uh, how do you see them maybe adapting and changing their practices after that, this crisis? And maybe even uh, the company leaders caring more about well-being for their employees and stuff like that? Oh, yes. I mean, it, this is, you know, I think it's going to be um, a big, I think, a big opportunity for, um, for employers to engage in a new way with their employees. And not only regarding the hygiene at the workplace, uh, but I think it's really, um, I mean, you know, it, it, it really is about how to, um, I mean, companies have learned now of the benefits of home working. Um, and, and I do think, you know, I think one of the losers in this, um, of this crisis will be uh, the real estate re related to office spaces because um, companies have now learned that they can be far more efficient by having um, meetings, um, video meetings and video calls and conferences, um, and sharing documents online while they're working on it um, is, is, you know, maybe this will be a game changer also with regards to internal organization, workflows um, in companies and more efficiency. Um, so I think this is, you know, this is, there's definitely a positive take back. There will be brands that will be winning and losing. It really depends on how a company and an employer strikes the right tone because right now is the time not to be putting forward your commercial priorities but to care not only for you for your um for your employees but also for the environment um you know csr giving back um to those who are underprivileged um, i think this is this is you know this is what it, uh, it's it's about it's about the, the, the companies have an opportunity now to, to reposition themselves. Well, actually, I wanted to ask that as my next question. Yeah. Do you think this will, oh. this will change a uh, brand's relationship with their customers? And maybe how, how is the experience going, going to change for the customer? Well, I think, first of all, <clears throat> for those who have been in confinement, uh, we have all been very much concerned about the basics, our health and our security and security yeah. maybe also our financial security so <clears throat> this was a main focus for all of us for the last two months getting back to normal life and back into uh, our normal routine 
we have all experienced on that actually there is a cri there's a war in crisis which is much bigger than the one we're fighting now with the pandemic which is a climate crisis and how what a massive impact it has had on nature just the fact that the entire world has been on a pause for two months i mean i've, I've i live in london i have never slept as the last two months because normally i have a plane every two minutes um and a lot of noise um and now it's, i'm in a sense i live in london but it's like the countryside, you know, you hear birds in the morning, never heard birds. The, the tourism industry will suffer a lot in hospitality because people will also regenerate in a different way. You know, they might not take jump into a plane to, to fly to the other end of the world, but they might consider, you know, jumping in the car and discovering a, a part of their country they haven't yet discovered. So I think local communities will benefit. Um, and, um, and the, the consumer will be driven to a more paying much more attention to the authenticity of the brand and the company how much they are engaged with people with nature um, and uh, so it is um, it is really about striking the right balance it's um, I find it um, um, I think it's, it's very positive also about you know we've all been stuck in our home so we opened the cupboards we know how much we're piling stuff you know, I've got a wardrobe which is gigantic. I only use, I've, I've been using in during confinement, of course, only 1% of my, of my wardrobe. But normally when I work, okay, so I use maybe 20% of my wardrobe. So 80% of the stuff we have in our houses is useless. You know, yeah. it's just, so I think there will be, people will come, you know, stop, stop stockpiling and just buying for the purpose of buying. Um, and uh, so there will be different ways of, consu of, of consuming um, and so people will spend more money on what really matters um, and um, and maybe be a bit more retained about consuming like you know buying the 30th per pair of shoes or um, uh, you know yeah ab absolutely and you talked a little bit earlier about uh, how the, the Asian countries were uh, so much ahead of us in technology mm -hmm. and everything. Mm -hmm. How do you see the, the process that we're going through, the digital transformation that we're going through, not only here, but all around the world? Mm -hmm. Well, I think it is, it is a, you know, people have realized, I mean, companies have realized how to digitally and on social media or somehow, somewhere engage with their clients. Now, this is the great challenge. I think now any brand, any brand, whether you're, you know, is providing products or services to a consumer, needs to have a consistent 360 um, online journey and, and have a capacity to communicate with the client um, on all, you know, in, in all phases, you know, whether it's recruitment, whether it's during um, during uh, the purchase and then after sales, um, but also engaging regarding the brand values and the brand communication. So this, this there are a lot of brands that ha have suffered enormously now during during this uh, confinement because they have completely lost out on sales, um, and they have been disconnected with their clients. So I think this this is. Um, and not everybody will manage to, you know, to cope with it. So I think we'll see also businesses going bust. And so like after any crisis, there will be new space um, for new brands. And I do think it's an opportunity for those digital native brands that are purely, you know, grown the, the business on the e-commerce side without physical stores. Um, they will have a competitive advantage now because they, they have already been growing their business um so digitally so i think it's um yeah i think it's an exciting it's a it's an exciting period where 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 we have been you know it's, it's been an accelerator actually the pandemic has been an accelerator for something that was really urgent to happen yeah 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 it, it, it's forcing us to move uh, to move faster in many in many aspects of uh, technology yeah. and life in general absolutely well Tom, uh, thank you, thank you so much for joining us for for this interview. Yeah. It was a pleasure, and thank you for sharing your vision with us. Okay, thank you so much, Lucas, and all the best to you. Thank Take you. Care. Take care, Tom.